tore down under stage two. Right, stage one, I couldn't find any footage, but the People's Classics not get taken down yet, so I hope this will stay up. But anyway, 3.7 kilometers to go. We got Matthew Lelanyu on the um, in the breakaway, well, on his own pretty much. He's going to get caught, so it's sort of irrelevant. His time gap, 12 seconds, it's pretty cash. Um, they're going to get him back. You can see a lot of teams at the back. It seemed like a very cruisy day, looking at the power data of some of the riders and what they said afterwards. It was a pretty cruisy stage. No one really wanted to do anything. So as you can see, the sprints, has, like the trains are sort of there, but not really. Everyone's quite chilled out at the moment. Uh, spread across the road, nothing absolutely nuts going full gas. Even the last bit, I'm looking at some power data from Strava and things and just like how they're racing now. It didn't seem like it was too chaotic until really about 1.5 to 1.7 kilometers to go when they catch Ladin Yu. So at the moment, it's like, they're obviously they're gonna catch. The teams are quite small here, only six, uh, plus you probably have, every team tends to have a climber or so. So then it's like, realistically, you've only got maybe four guys for the lead out, three guys for the lead out, because you're probably gonna have a couple of domestiques who are tired from chasing all day. So it's like, you, if you take it up at 3K, you're gonna get swamped. Um, but anyway, we can swap the different teams on the right hand side, we've got Michigan Scott, the footage is very blurry. And then sort of got a uh, lot of Sedal in the middle, uh, right inside with Sky and Katusha. Um, you can see Damage and Data there. Um, Barry and Merida are there for Bauhaus. Um, the guy who's, I guess, has been the standout person for me has been Jasper Philipson for UAE. Um, he's actually done really, really well. Um, for quite an unknown sprinter, he's got a couple of top 10, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Why well, I would be happy if I was him. Uh, you can see Sagan's there. Um, Sky looking pretty organized, Katusha also there um, for Jens de Boucher, um, and then you can see just quick step guys, just everyone sort of dotted around, U Uni SA don't really have a sprint option, so they're not really going for it, they're mainly breakaway, and I think Chris Harper, anyway, left, it's starting to get a bit more serious, you can see the people are getting into the drops, getting arrow, left hand side, we've got Michigan Scott for Daryl MP trying to get a couple of bonus seconds, Sky in the middle, um, you can see Barry Marino again on the left hand side, right hand side we've got um, Welshide's team somewhere moving up, uh, and then finally we've got Bora moving up and this is really where it starts to definitely ramp up you can see there's everyone's jostling for positions it's the road gets incredibly wide now um, and everyone's trying to sort it out and Bora do well here they get to the front early um it's a sort of downhill 60 65 k's an hour i think the speed comes up in a second a uh, bit of bumping from Sagan there to try and get rid of uh, Walshai's lead out um, but everyone's looking pretty chill at the moment. Um, you've got a good block on the right-hand side of uh, Lotta and El Yumbo. Um, they're looking pretty solid for Danny Van Poppel. They generally do lead out quite well. They're now on sort of the bike lane pavement sort of thing. But anyway, this Bora ride has really started to change it. You can see now here's uh, Viviani with his lead out men behind him. Not great. Um, Quick step haven't really had good lead outs, didn't have a good lead out yesterday, and again today it's pretty messy. Um, again, just so much mess everywhere. Um, this I think is where finally it does get a bit more organized. Um, 60Ks an hour, Team Sky, three guys for Halverson, the Norwegian sprinter, he was pretty solid. He was under 23 world champion, I believe. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's solid. Like He's never gonna win a stage like this, but he'll be able to get top 10, and Sky have the firepower to support him. Left hand side, we have Cannondale going up for um, Dan McClay. Uh, and it's really starting to string out and basically everyone's on the left hand side really trying to move up there's a couple of people on the right hand side who are bumping and barging but the left hand side is really where you want to be at this moment in time um as they move to the right hand side uh to take the corner uh this camera angle is absolutely useless but you can see sky there lola and yumbo are there uh michigan scott sort of there ccc for yap and i don't know what happened to him uh obviously there was this huge crash which is just about maybe 800 meters to go they've just gone through the one kilometer banner uh and you can see that well, I can barely see. The footage is so grainy. Sky pulled off. Lotto Sudal pulled off. Now, I'll watch the right-hand side. Uh, about five wheels back, there's going to be a huge crash with the Astana bloke, uh, which happens just about now, I believe. Um, yeah, there you go. Astana goes down. Michigan Scott now have a, a solid lead-out for Daryl MP. They really take over at this point. Sky on the right-hand side are trying to get back. You can see Caleb Ewan on the left-hand side just popping out there. Daryl MP's behind him. Kyle Ryanen is there. Um, you can also see that we have... Uh, uh, so some CCC guys, Patrick Bevan is moving up, Lewis Lange, Sanchez is second wheel, he decides to go early, I'm just going to pause it here so you can see, Sagan's there, Caleb Ewan's there, but Viviani is quite far back, um, we also have um, Yaka Moreczko is way too far back, same with Dan McClay, I think a couple of them did get stuck behind the sprint, anyway at this moment Lewis Lange Sanchez goes on the left hand side of the road thinking that the lead out's gone, right hand side we now have uh, Patrick Bevan going and Caleb Ewan's trying to get on his wheel. On the left-hand side, it gets completely boxed because Luis Leon Sanchez basically stops. Viviani gets tr stopped behind it and basically the only person who is really a free run is Caleb Ewan and Sagan. Um, everyone else really got stuck on the left, on the well, right hand, left-hand side if we see it from straight on because um, Sanchez was slowing up massively and then on the right-hand side, you had Jasper Philipson who just couldn't overtake. So it's sort of very boxed sprint. Caleb Ewan might have been able to have it, but Patrick Bevan 
is now really in the driver's seat, um, and I reckon that he he will probably not sure he's going to win it, but he'll definitely get top five now, top three, because um, he's a very solid climber as well, especially on these short ones. But anyway, the absolute legend won. Um, and anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little footage. If I get any more footage, I'll obviously post it, and hopefully this doesn't get taken down. Cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one.